Hey YouTube friends and family, how's everybody doing? I hope you're all doing absolutely great. Are you getting ready for the season? The holiday? I wanted to get on here and I wanted to talk just a little bit. I'll try and keep it timed down, but I've got a lot to say. And I hope some of you are interested in what I want to share. A year ago, while I was very sick, I put on this hat. Do you guys remember this hat? This hat has brought so much happiness and joy into our family. Four generations. Yes, four. Yes, four now. Anyway, it's brought a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. But I put it on and did a video last year and got attacked. Oh, I did. Some people just didn't see any good in that at all. In fact, they were down on Christmas. Said it was a pagan holiday. Shook me up. I had heard it before. Oh, I'd heard it many times. But I'm one of those people that because of the way my father raised me and my mother, but more so my father, I don't go on what I hear other people say. I do my own research. I used to go to the public library and I would read book after book after book. I was a great researcher put out a lot of good reports and essays in school. Wish we had a had PowerPoint. I could have really done some good stuff. But we didn't. Anyway, so when I was told that that was awful, they were totally disappointed in me because I wore that hat while doing a video about Christmas. And Christmas is a pagan holiday. It's supposed to be about Christ's birth. I thought, wait a minute. In all my research, which I had done, I couldn't find that. Oh, I found an association with paganism. I mean, you can't look at our universe and, and read the star map and go back in history where people actually prayed to all these gods and worshipped all these gods without realizing that there was paganism going on. There was a midwinter festival back in about 325 AD or, and before. Uh, I can't give you the exact dates now because it's been a while since I researched it, but this is stuff you can find out yourself. You certainly can. And I would highly suggest that you do. Because most of what we say, most of what we share, most of what we believe is stuff that's been handed down generation to generation. In many of the religions, a lot of you belong to the same religious group that your parents did and their parents did and their parents did and their parents did because it's a hand-me-down. You've never researched to find out your own beliefs. You've just gone along with the program because that's what you were told. And I, for one, never looked at my daddy and said, I don't believe you. No, never did. But back in Mesopotamia and Russia and uh, Egypt and uh, I got notes here. Maybe I have that in notes. Maybe not. Anyway, they certainly did uh, worship gods. 
uh, the Romans, the Chinese, the Egyptians, the Mesopotamians. That's a mouthful, guys, for me. Anyway, they all did what was called a midwinter festival. And the people celebrated, and they did this for 12 days. See where the 12 days comes? And they would bring gifts and stuff to these gods. Gods that they never actually saw, except maybe in the stars. They would give gifts to the gods for the solstice, winter sol solstice. Uh, because spring was coming and they were wanting good crops again and they were thankful for the crops that they had already harvested. And so it was this big woo-woo where they worshipped pagan gods. Well, the Christians and the Catholics wanted to pull people away from pagan beliefs. It's not hard to pull a person away from, I mean, it's, it is hard to pull a person away from something that they're used to doing or that their parents taught them to do or their parents' parents taught them to do. It's not easy to pull them away from their normal, what they believe is right. And the reason they believe it's right is because it was taught to them. Hand me down knowledge. Anyway, in order to do this, the Catholic Church put together a special mass and they named this mass Christ Mass. Christ, M-A-S-S, -S, Christ Mass. And what they wanted to celebrate was the Last Supper and the birth of Christ. And so they put together this Christ Mass. Now my feeling is this, my friends, and nowhere could I find it in the Bible, nor could I find it in books of history or in researching history, but God gave His only begotten Son to the earth. He gave His Son to us. And so we give gifts, is my opinion. Just my opinion. However, I do have some facts. And these are facts that you can find yourself. You don't even need my help. You have a book available to each and every one of you, even, even the atheist. All of you, the Buddhist, the atheist, the Baptist, Pentecostal, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, the... Uh, Jehovah Witness, whatever your religion is. And yes, there are many different Bibles, and they've all been scripted and touched by man's hand. Keep that in mind. Not saying they're not true. I'm not faulting any religion. I love each and every one of you. And I believe in every, every pot of stew, there's good. So in every book, there is good. I know this. Even, I mean, the Torah. There are so many books out there that are of value. But we've got to come to a point where we evolve past the hand-me-down beliefs. Let's start with the birth of Christ. Was Christ born on the 25th of December. I'll get to that. I'll gladly get to that. But let's go back to this midwinter festival where these people, massive numbers of people, worshipped gods. Christians, Catholics, wanting to pull people up out of this belief, to pull them away from it, to uh, the word I found, which I thought was really well said, was that they wanted to uh, 
counteract counteract this belief system get them away from paganism so they put together the Christ mass and that's how it began Christmas now it's my understanding and I'm not a Catholic but it's my understanding they no longer perform the Christ mass perhaps they've found some reason not to I don't know I can't elaborate on that what I can say is nowhere in your holy book your Bible does it say Christmas nowhere just doesn't it's not there as far as Christ's birth was he born on the 25th of December no not at all that you can find in your Bible you certainly can and I believe that I found it in Luke I may be wrong but it seems like it was Luke what you need to look for in your Bible is how John the Baptist came to be because John the Baptist being the cousin of Jesus was conceived six months before Jesus was John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus so when he was conceived if you go six months from his conception and it tells you in the scriptures certainly does when he was conceived when John the Baptist was conceived go six months from that and it will put Jesus's conception at the month of no November it doesn't say where in November so being a woman having more children I can tell you that nine months later comes the baby so nine months later would put Jesus's birth in August or September go look it up guys I'm you know it's a fact it's in the Bible so if he was born in August or September that falls with the story about the shepherds minding their flocks because they would be minding their flocks during that time not in December they wouldn't have them out in the fields in December it was too cold way too cold or in January remember Christmas used to be in January go look it up I'm not making it up anyway gosh guys these are facts you can find it yourself and I, I know there's going to be people attacking me, me but that's okay I'm not telling you what to believe I'm telling you what I found and you can find it yourself Mary didn't ride on a donkey no she didn't ride into Bethlehem on a donkey that we know of doesn't say so in the Bible of course it doesn't say what she rode in on maybe she rode in on a motorcycle for all I know <laughs> just saying maybe she rode on the back of Joseph I don't know because the scriptures don't say so however there's a lot of songs and a lot of stories about Christmas that say and portray her as riding into Bethlehem on the back of a donkey doesn't say that in the scriptures in fact it says very very little about that did they go to an inn where they were told they had to leave there was no room for them no scriptures show clearly that that didn't happen either there was no inn it doesn't talk about an inn at all or some inn keeper that tells them to get out of here no was Jesus born in a stable well I found where it says he was uh, that Mary and Joseph stayed in a Cataluma a Cataluma is a guest house or a guest lodging so obviously they probably went to some friend's house or some family's house or somebody Joseph worked with anyway somebody's house and there wasn't room inside the house so they stayed in a guest house 
There's many people today that have guest houses or guest lodging for people that come and stay with them. It was no different back then. Anyhow, the point of all this is this. What is Christmas? What is it really? Is it a pagan holiday? We know it's not the birth of Christ. In fact, if you, if you research this, and it'll take you back to 325 AD, long after Jesus' death, long after his death, you're going to find out Jesus was not born on the 25th. You will find out that Christmas is not a holy day. It was never set up to be a holy day. It was never, ever, ever considered a holy day. It has nothing to do with religion at all. It has nothing to do with Jesus' birth. It was a celebration of the Last Supper. It certainly was. But through the years, just like that game we used to play when we were kids, where you'd line up a bunch of kids and you'd tell a, a secret, you'd whisper ps, 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 this secret, and that person would whisper it to the next person, that person would whisper it to the next person, and on, on down the line. By the time you got to the last kid, that was not the original secret at all. It wasn't. It's the hearing, the imagination, the thinking, and the speaking. And people put their own spin on things. Well, the story of Christmas has had many spins. It's been added to. It's had stories. It's had songs. It's had poetry. It's had all these things added that you will not find in Scripture. Christmas is uh, uh, another thing. The tree. The tree. Everybody th says, it's a sin to put up a tree. It's a pagan holiday. You can't put up the tree. Well, there's that whispering coming down the line. Hand me down, hand me down, hand me down. Information. Because only in Jeremiah will you find anything about the tree. And what it does say is that the Gentiles would go out into the forest, they'd cut down a tree, they'd take that tree, they'd carve it, and create some image, some statue, even a cross. And they would overlay it and cover it with gold or silver, and they would worship it. That's what it talks about. Is that a Christmas tree? No. Is there anything wrong with children dancing around a Christmas tree, putting up ornaments and singing uh, carols and uh, giggling because Santa Claus is coming? And is there really a Santa Claus that wears this big hat with a bell on it? And does he fly through the sky at night in a sleigh driven by 12 reindeer that can fly? Does he have big chubby cheeks and does he go ho, ho, ho? No. But is it fun? Yes. And I'll tell you something, friends. There's a force out here. Right out here. Right in your own home. Right outside your door. Off your stoop. That does not want you to enjoy this life. Is it about buying a whole bunch of gifts and not being able to pay the rest of the year? No. Is it about joy and happiness and sharing? Yes. Is it about gathering together with your loved ones? Yes. Sharing the gifts? Yes. God shared his son. It was a gift to us. But is it about God, is it about Jesus? Is it about Santa Claus? No. No. 
Is there anything wrong with Christmas? To some people, there is. To some people, they still think because of hand-me-down knowledge that it's a pagan holiday. Friends, I highly recommend that you do your own research. Do your own research. It is not a pagan holiday. It is not going to hurt anyone to enjoy the season, to enjoy the holiday. It's not. It's about love. It's all about love. And we need to learn to love one another. Now, granted, on Christmas, there's many people that are lonely, people that have no one to share with. How grand would it be that you took a moment to invite them or to share a gift with them, bring them in, let them help make cookies and decorate them, decorate your tree, string popcorn or cranberry, enjoy a meal. It's all about love. And if we don't evolve past all this nonsense, absolute nonsense, it would be like saying that we have to eliminate many parts of our lives. I mean, they all stemmed from a beginning where people did believe in gods, not a god. No matter who your god is. We, all of our beginnings began back then. And over the years, they've been tainted, altered, and changed to better serve guilt. You should feel guilty. Well, in my home, I refuse to. We will enjoy this holiday that we refer to as Christmas because it really is one of the grandest days of the year. It is fun. Children laugh and giggle and play and they don't deserve any less. And I'm sure that our universal creator is very pleased when he sees us sharing love. He doesn't want us feeling guilty, ashamed, afraid, fears against all faith. Do your own research and you will find that Christmas is not a holy day. It is not about Christ's birth. In fact, we're only supposed to celebrate his death. And why would that be? Well, why did he die? He died for you. You know, friends, it's time that we grow up. We need to learn to get along I listen to people here on YouTube, good people, bickering and fighting and being nasty to each other, blocking each other, cutting each other out of each other's lives because they disagree. Well, you know what? If I grab a pot and I put a rock in it and I put some water in it and each person brings something to put into that pot, we may end up with a great feast. That's what our truth is. Everybody has something to offer. And if we all bring it together and take what we need from each one, from each other, we may compile the truth. This is nonsense. It's nonsense. Merry Christmas, everybody. Christmas is fun. It's not a pagan holiday. 
And the truth is out here, but it takes all of us to find it. Be nice, be kind, love one another, unity, togetherness, caring and sharing. That's what it's about. It's time we grow up. It's about love. Look it up. It's in Corinthians. I won't tell you which book, and I won't tell you which verse. Find it. It's there. It's about love. Not fear, not jealousy, not envy, not pagans, not worshiping graven idols. It's not about any of the garbage that you've been fed for breakfast. It's not about the color of your skin. It's not about your hair. It's not about your clothing. It's not about where you live. It's not about what you eat. It's not about what religion you belong to. It's not about, it's not about. It's about love. It's about love. Now I'll tell you what. We are going to have a Merry Christmas. And I hope you do too. Let the children have the grandest, greatest Christmas they've ever had. Because with Fukushima and many other things going on, how many are they going to have? Grow up. Evolve past the nonsense. Love one another. Except that somebody might know more than you do. There's always somebody that does. God bless everybody with happiness and a light heart and a good meal and a beautiful Christmas tree. And let the children believe in something that lightens their heart and makes them happy. Because that's what it's all about. I love you all. Great big hugs. No nativity sets. It's not about that. It's not a holy day. It's just Merry Christmas. <laughs>